Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of clovane sesquiterpenoids guided by a neural network model. This work was published in Nature Synthesis by the group of Timothy Newhouse. Clovane sesquiterpenoids exist widely in nature in both marine and terrestrial organisms. Some of these compounds have been reported to have interesting biological properties such as neurotrophic activity and antioxidant effects. There are many total and semi-syntheses existing in the literature, but all share a common strategy where the central six-membered ring is constructed early and maintained throughout the synthesis. This strategy limits the scope of the modifications that can be made to the B-ring and therefore prevents structure activity relationship studies from being carried out on this section of the molecule. In this paper, the authors investigate using machine learning to help guide synthesis by using it to analyse known reactions in the literature and then predict the outcome of proposed reactions. The authors sought to use radical chemistry to form this ring as these reactions are often tolerant of different functional groups and would allow for a greater range of molecular diversity to be explored. To generate the machine learning models, they first generated a library of similar reactions taken from Reaxis and then annotated them with chemical descriptors generated by DFT studies. They then trained a range of different machine learning architectures on this library and evaluated their ability to accurately predict reaction yields. Once the optimal machine learning model was identified, they then applied it to human-generated retrosyntheses to assess which route was likely to be most successful. Once the optimal disconnection was identified, they could then computationally screen different substituent effects to further optimize the reaction. In the first step of their computational investigations, they looked at the influence of transition state energy on reaction yield. Their model compound could undergo a radical cyclization through either a 6 endo or 5 exo mechanism. In general, the 5 exo mode is kinetically favoured, whereas the 6 endo mode is thermodynamically favoured, as is predicted by Beckwith's rules. However, by looking at the library of reactions taken from Reaxis and comparing the reported yield with the calculated transition state energies, they could see that there was no direct correlation. Therefore, a more complex model would need to be generated. To do this, they took 99 reactions from Reaxis and carried out DFT calculations to generate 340 descriptors for each one. These descriptors include parameters such as orbital energy, charge distribution, and steric effects. They used a subset of these reactions to train the model, and then the remainder were used as a test library, where the reported yield was compared to that generated by the model. From this, they determined that the neural network model was the most effective at predicting reaction yield, showing an R-squared correlation of 0.82 between the predicted and reported yields. With this model now developed, they used it to assess their retrosynthesis of clovane-2,9-dione. In this retrosynthesis, they disconnected the B-ring at three different positions, all corresponding to six endotrig radical cyclizations. From this, they determined that disconnecting alpha to the ketone and cyclizing with a terminal alkene was most likely to be successful, with a predicted yield of 46%. To further validate this model, they synthesized a range of cyclization precursors and compared the predicted and experimental yields. This proved to be remarkably effective, showing an R-squared value of 0.89 and a mean absolute error of just 6.3%. So now, let's look at the synthesis that was designed using this neural network model. This started with the Gilman addition of a vinyl cuprate generated from vinyl magnesium bromide. This underwent a conjugate addition to a cyclopentanone, generating an enolate intermediate that was then trapped with trimethyl orthoformate. This is first activated by coordination to boron trifluoride, which promotes the elimination of methoxide to generate the cationic electrophile that is attacked by the enolate. The addition of hydrochloric acid hydrolyzes the acetal, forming the aldehyde, which totimerizes to form the enol, with an overall yield of 40%. This then took part in a Robinson annulation. Deprotonation by DBU generates an enolate that then undergoes conjugate addition to methyl vinyl ketone. The enolate that is formed by this addition can then undergo a totimerization that leaves a double bond on the other side of the oxygen. It is this totimer that can undergo a cyclization to form the six-membered ring, as is favoured by Baldwin's rules. This then undergoes protonation by methane sulfonic acid, first generating the alcohol and then protonating it once again 
allowing it to be eliminated as water to generate a carbocation. The alpha proton is then eliminated to regenerate an equivalent of acid and form the desired enone with an overall yield of 63%. This enone was then reacted in the next step in a hydrosilylation. Palladium 2 chloride first reacts with triethylsilane in the presence of the Brettfoss ligand, and this generates palladium nanoparticles in situ with the silyl group and hydride coordinated to the surface. The hydride first undergoes conjugate addition, and the oxygen of the resulting enolate intermediate then coordinates to the palladium nanoparticle. This then reacts with the surface bound silyl group, generating the TES protected enolate in a 48% yield. The silyl enol ether then took part in a selenation reaction. It was reacted with phenyl selenium chloride, generating a phenyl selenyl ether at the alpha position upon the elimination of triethyl chloride. This selenyl ether served as a substrate for the radical cyclization. Tributyl tin hydride was first activated with AIBN to generate a tin radical that attacks the selenium, which then eliminates, leaving a radical residing on the position alpha to the carbonyl. This then underwent a 6 endo trig cyclization with the alkene, and the resulting radical was then quenched by a reaction with another equivalent of tributyl tin hydride. This generated clovane 2 9 dione with a 45% yield. This is almost identical to the yield predicted by the neural network model of 46%. In addition, the product formed by the more kinetically favoured 5 exotrig cyclization was also produced in a 45% yield. To further demonstrate the utility of this synthetic route, they also synthesised Rumfeld clovane A. Using the previously synthesised enone intermediate, it was reacted with tes triflate, which first silates the enone carbonyl, and then the alpha position is deprotonated by triethylamine to form the silyl enol ether. The carbonyl, present on the 5 membered ring, was then subject to a Cori Bakshi Shibata reduction. In this reaction, a chiral oxazoborolidine catalyst first reacts with borane, generating the nitrogen boron adduct. Boron, present in this catalyst, then coordinates to the carbonyl oxygen, and this directs the hydrogen bound to the borane to attack from one face of the molecule. The addition of another equivalent of borane displaces the catalyst from the substrate, and the newly formed boron adduct is then hydrolyzed by hydrochloric acid to produce the target alcohol in a 61% yield with a 1 to 1 DR and a 98% EE. This alcohol was then benzoylated using benzyl chloride, triethylamine and DMAP. From here, they repeated the same hydrosilation, selenation and radical cyclizations that we saw earlier. This formed the B-ring in a 38% yield, in contrast to the 51% yield predicted by the neural network model. As we saw previously, the 5 exo trig product was also formed this time in a 42% yield. This was then taken forward to a Bayer Villager oxidation. The compound is first reacted with MCPBA and sodium bicarbonate. The MCPBA anion attacks the carbonyl and the resulting peroxyhemiacetal is then deprotonated by another equivalent of bicarbonate. Instead of eliminating the peroxybenzoate, a rearrangement occurs where a carbon-carbon bond migrates to form a carbon-oxygen bond, producing an ester upon the elimination of metachlorobenzoate. This was taken forward to an ester hydrolysis using sodium hydroxide. This hydrolyzed both the pendant benzyl ester and the cyclic ester that was formed by the Bayer villager oxidation. Reacting this compound with hydrochloric acid promoted an intramolecular esterification between the newly revealed alcohol and the carboxylic acid. This formed Rumfeld clovane A in a 49% yield. This compound could be reacted further to form Kananga terpene 2. To do this, they used the benzoylated intermediate from the synthesis of Rumfeld clovane A and reduced it with potassium selectride. This is a very sterically bulky reducing agent that preferentially attacks from the top face of the carbonyl. This produced the target compound in a 69% yield with a 3 to 1 DR. This synthesis allowed the authors to prove the structure of Kananga terpene 2 as the reported structure was shown to have the incorrect stereochemistry at both the benzylated and the hydroxylated positions. Well that brings us to the end of this synthesis, which is a powerful demonstration of how machine learning can be used to guide chemical synthesis. Join me in the next video, where we will look at the total synthesis of cephalosporolide F.